Tom, thanks for being such a good sport. Thanks for joining. Thanks for giving Sammy some instruction in the world of CEO, which you are now one of these uh, CEOs in our field. And congratulations. I'm so pleased that this has happened for you. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's been a, quite the journey, as you would imagine. The, the, the CEO recruiting process is quite lengthy, but here I am in month five of the job. And it's, it's really exciting. I learned a lot along the way from both Alcon and Johnson & Johnson, the, the two strategics that I've had the pleasure of working uh, for during my 20-year career, sort of getting ready for, for this moment. And, you know, learned a lot. Learned about uh, surgeon centricity from Alcon, the, the, really the gold standard in, in surgeon centricity uh, over the years. And from Johnson & Johnson, patient centricity. And when you add those two things together, I think they've prepared me for my, my journey here with Samsara Vision. Tom, give us a little plug for your company. What is it? What's the unique selling position there? Uh, what do you do that's so great? Sure, at Samsara Vision, we are building on a, an implant that is telescopic in nature and can magnify light 2.7 times to the back of the retina. Now, this is for people with late stage A and D. Uh, the technology's been around for a while, but there was a difficult surgery and maybe some challenges in patient recruitment uh, based on a, a surgical team that was challenging. So we're trying to iron out the, the, the difficulties that the product has had. And we, we've got the Amsara Vision T-Cert SI, which has received CE mark in April. And we're beginning, we're in the process of trying to gain reimbursement market to market. And we're, we're having great success uh, doing so. We're going to begin commercialization in Europe, which is exciting for us. And and, and uh, then in the United States, we have to do a confirmatory trial, uh, which we submitted our IDE and, and uh, to the FDA, and we're beginning that process of, of finding the right CRO and connecting with the patient advocacy groups uh, to, to reach the patients that are out there that may have lost hope, but what we'll be able to bring uh, some vision back with, with an implant. And, and our technology is very unique. Uh, we, in our early generation products, in an FDA trial, we brought three and four lines uh, of vision back and, and with VFQ scores that were fantastic and subjective nature. And we've maintained that vision in those patients for a five-year period. The challenge we had was a very traumatic uh, surgical experience. A 12 millimeter incision uh, was, was the starting point. There's other 60 minutes time on tap. Made it very difficult to make this a, a broad product. And now we've fixed that, bringing that incision size down to six and a half millimeters. Only three sutures post-op. Uh, a foldable device and a preloaded, uh, or not foldable, but a device that's preloaded and can be easily inserted through a smaller incision uh, uh, into the eye. And I think we've ironed out a lot of the difficulties that the original product had, but maintained the benefit of that magnification of light for these folks. And after the training, we, we've got great patient experience uh, and, and uh, stories from patients from the original device. We want to see that happen with T-Cert SI. And, and we know we can. We'll, we'll have the, again, the European experience will begin uh, in, in earnest here in a couple of months. And then uh, we will be uh, moving towards that FDA trial, which is very exciting uh, for, for us in the company. So uh, stay tuned. More to come. And, and we're, we're out there looking for members of the industry that, that want to join an exciting mission and get ex inspired by bringing vision back to these folks who, in our industry, there, there's a lot of, and, and rightfully so, there's a lot of investment going on in early dry AMD, uh, in, in, in GA at the early part of the disease, the disease uh, in the pharmaceutical world, and, and that's all very appropriate. But we have to also keep in mind that some people have, have moved past that in their, in their journey and, and now have, uh, are experiencing blindness that is a risk to their health and safety, that, that takes away their, their enjoy, their, the way they can enjoy their life. And we have to innovate for them as well. It's, it's, our, it's our duty uh, in the industry to make sure that we're serving the, 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 the populations that have the most need. And I think that their vision is focused on those folks. And, uh, you know, I, it's interesting, this, I guess, theory of, of why to groom managers and then make them switch, you know, within different parts of the company. Is that because... As human beings, we have to personally constantly evolve. Um, is that why you can't just always have an expert go into that position? You want somebody that's evolving and growing within the company. Yeah, that's a great question. And I'm not sure that the companies, uh, any company in business today does a, a fantastic job at that. I, I always, uh, in my groups, which, which over the years have been you know, fairly sizable, uh, we always stress that that talent and evaluation of talent 
and exposure of top talent and stretch experiences is important to plan and budget for as a financial plan. So along with our annual financial plan uh, in my groups, we've always done a, uh, a talent assessment that, and there's a process to it. And then you, you pick the folks that, uh, that, that rise to the top and you have to make sure that that group is not uh, objectively chosen and you have to make sure that there's diversity and inclusion and considered um, along the way. But then once you have a group of people you want to stretch, you need to put them in the right position to be successful. And your, your talent, your organizational uh, chart should include subject matter experts, which are not appropriate or do not want to be, you know, moved around every three years and, and to be experiencing different things. They want to be an expert in something. So the best teams, I would say, have a mix of uh, people that are that are um, um, growing and learning and stretching, uh, that are on like a three-year journey uh, to achieve something, and those who are in the space that that will will have uh, um, what they're doing will will uh, their their subject matter experts. And I've been fortunate that that I've been surrounded by those uh, over the years, uh, as well as you know uh, being being a person stretching. I you know I've made good friends with the people that are also subject matter. So you need, you need a mix of both. Uh, and there's yeah. a lot of reasons. Now, you know, final question as, uh, you know, Sammy, again, if she chooses ophthalmology as a career, I'm sure she's going to be in a diverse group much more than what we're looking at today. And that's thanks to the likes of groups like Al, for example, in our field. Um, what do you think ophthalmology is going to look like in 20 years? More women, more diversity? Uh, what will we have? Yeah, I think, and learning this from J&J, &J, I think ophthalmology, the business side of ophthalmology, should reflect the patients and surgeons that we serve. Uh, so you will hear, you know, we, we talk about uh, optometry in the United States quite, quite a bit and the demographic changing and how that's become a female profession more so uh, than it was in the past. And, you know, that, uh, we should reflect that. Al, I think, has done a wonderful job of bringing through people or, or making awareness of this for uh, CEOs like Nancy Lurker are a great example of people that have come to our ophthalmology space and been very successful. And we should, should embrace that and bring through people through the ranks, just like you and I were able to do as we grew in our company. So now, as Sammy uh, comes to her career, I would like to her to consider Samsara Vision, because if you think about it, by that time, we're going to be a, a very successful uh, commercial operation, bringing vision back to thousands of people around the world, and, and maybe Sammy could join us. And we'll teach her the ranks and then she could be the CEO of Sanitar Vision. Well, Tom, she might disappoint you. She seems to like to open up things uh, on camera, you know, with the, the cute fingernails and, oh, look what I got here. There might be a YouTube feature out there. Who knows? Uh, but it's a bit of a random walk for everyone still, no matter what the ca career tra trajectory. You're part of the Pi family now, Tom. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure growing up with you in Asia, so to speak, and to see your career uh, take off to a new dimension now. I'm sure we'll see you out there in, in the Pi world somewhere. And uh, join us anytime. My pleasure. Thank you for the time today.